segment of Axe Watchmen. And now that we're um, nearing the completion of White It Out 5 Part 3, I'll now have more time to spend answering some of the questions that's been posted on Watchmen Reports um, Axe Watchmen. So uh, to start, um, I came across this question about, um, it says, are males still required to be circumcised? Okay. Now this pretty much is a, this is a really hard one to explain, so, but I'm going to try to explain it, okay? We have the law that was given to us by Moses, pretty much. The Most High gave it to us through Moses, okay? And the law uh, basically states things about circumcision, and it talks about uh, fringe wearing, and just all types of different things. And the first thing we want to do when we come to find out who we are as a people is we run to the law and we're trying to keep the law, okay? Now, one of the problems with that is this here. Okay, we come across New Testament scriptures, right? And we come across a, a passage where Shaul, which is Paul, is talking about, hey, we're no longer under the law, we're under grace, and all that they kind of stuff. So the Christians have kind of twisted that thing around to say almost as if, as if um, the law that says, thou shalt, or the commandment that says, thou shalt not kill, we're no longer under it. Well, what are you saying? Are you saying we can go and kill? No, they're not saying that. But they themselves are all twisted up in the way they try to explain things. And, and then, then you have what we, when we come into this truth as Hebrew Israelites, we're, we go to the scriptures and we try to keep these laws and these commandments. Now, here's the problem that we're faced with here. This is one of the biggest problems, okay? And it's the, same, it's the problem that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes had. Okay, this is why Yehoshua, when he was here, he he literally just had it with them. You know, he was always coming at them. They were always coming at him, and he was literally getting them told. Okay, woe unto you, what scribes, Pharisees, and hypocrites. Okay, now why did he call them hypocrites? The reason he called them hypocrites is because they were so concerned of the letter of the law and keeping the law. Okay, until there were other issues that were more weightier matters that they wouldn't be concerned about. Okay, or they were so concerned about the circumcision of the flesh and they had totally ignored the circumcision of the heart, which is spiritual. You see, when Yehoshua came around, he was probably the first real spiritual man to ever set foot on the planet. Now, I know we had David and Elijah and all these prophets were spiritual, but I'm talking about a fully spiritual man. Yehoshua was that man, fully in line in the spirit. This is why Yehoshua could look at certain passages of the Old Testament. He said, well, you have heard that it was said in the law, basically. But now I say this to you because he was so spiritual, he could understand the law or what the law meant. Okay. So now, here we come into this, these scriptures and we see this scripture about circumcision. And we say, man, are we still required to be circumcised? Well, this is what I say to you, okay? To be circumcised of the flesh and not be circumcised of the heart, it just does you no good then. You see, that circumcision of the flesh is useless to not be circumcised of the heart. Now, um, should we be circumcised of the heart only and not be circumcised of the flesh? Well, that's kind of like saying, um, you know, the scripture says, thou shalt not steal. So, I'm not going to steal mentally, but physically I'm going to steal. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, it's kind of a, a catch-22 type thing. To say that you no longer need to be circumcised is kind of like saying that you no longer need to you no longer need to abstain from fornication. In other words, you can still go and commit adultery because all of these are laws of the scriptures. They're all laws. Now, I think the message pretty much that I get from the Spirit is that we're supposed to walk in the Spirit because the Spirit will tell you what laws and what things it are about. Just like we talked about the fringe thing. Everybody wearing the fringes, right? 
right? And the fringes were what, what was the fringes for? He said that the fringes were so that you re, re, look at the fringe and you would remember his laws and statutes. But now, well, under the new covenant, what did he say he was going to do in the new covenant? He said, I'm going to write my laws in your heart and in your mind, in your spirit. I'm going to write my laws down in you so that you'll be able to do what? Obey them. Why? Because the old way didn't work. Did the old way work with Israel? Let's answer that question. Did the old way work? No, it did not. Okay, the old way didn't work. So the Most High said, you know what? I'm going to make a way for them. That if they can be grafted, regrafted in, because I broke them off because they couldn't keep my laws and statutes, right? So now they can be grafted back in how? Through the Ruach, through receiving the set-apart spirit. So then you receive the set-apart spirit, and then through the spirit, you walk in the spirit, and the spirit will start to write his laws and statutes in your heart, and you'll find it easy to walk in his ways and do his ways, and you won't need a friend to tell you, oh, this you better remember his laws, because you now have them in your heart, you see. So then it's, it's one of those things to where we need to understand what it means to be spiritual. Now, I got a scripture, you know I got one for you, okay? Look at this scripture here, okay? Because he talked about being circumcised. And he talked about how, how um, it, here's another issue. Now, I want you to look at this scripture here and think about this for a minute, okay? This is Romans chapter 2, verse 26. And this is what he says. For circumcision verily, verily profited if you keep of the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not the uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does, does transgress the law? So basically he's going into this. He said, wait a minute, I want y'all to understand something here. Okay, because if you you if you become circumcised, right, and and but you you don't understand what the circumcision is for, okay, because we're obeying the law, but circumcision of the heart is so is to cut away what? Okay? Think about what circumcision is naturally. It's to cut away the skin, the foreskin of the flesh, right? The foreskin. So you have the circumcision, right? Now, spiritual circumcision is the most high trying to cut away from you that flesh from the spiritual man so that that spiritual man can rise up and walk in you. That's Yahushua in you, okay? So now when we become grafted in, you become baptized, you receive the Ruach, now the law is different to you. Now, Christians say, no, 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 you can't rebind them to the law. No one's binding them to the law if you're in the spirit. Listen to what the scripture says here. Now, this is what the scripture says. Now, remember I said, I got a scripture for you. I really got one for you. Look at this scripture here. This is Romans chapter 8, and this is going to be verse, let's see. Uh, this is verse... Let's start at verse uh, 2. It says, For the law of the Spirit of life and Yahushua, the Mahamashiach, have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through what? The flesh. See, through the flesh, we're weak to, the, to breaking the law. We're prone to breaking the law through the flesh. Okay? It says, But Yahu, but, but Yah, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Okay. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. For the, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Yahuwah, for it is not subject to the law of Elohim. So you see, the carnal mind, the, the carnal mind is not subject to the law of Elohim. 
but the spiritual mind is. So basically, if you're walking in the spirit, and the Most High will write his laws in your heart and in your mind, and you will know what laws you should keep, what laws you should you should um, uh, walk in. And, and guess what? It's, it's, if you think that the law is only in the Torah, then you're confused. Do you understand what I'm saying? The law is not only the Torah. Now, my example to you is this here. When you look at Yehoshua, right, when he um, told the children of Israel, or, or shall I say, when he was talking to um, the, the, the disciples, okay, he said, Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, right, that thou shalt not commit adultery, right? Then he said, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman committeth adultery in his heart. Now that ain't in the law. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? That is not a part of the law. You can't find that in the law, right? But Yehoshua is trying to tell them this is still a law. This is another law. Why? Because this is what the Spirit is saying. So Yehoshua, being, being in the Spirit, is able to articulate what it really means when the Scripture says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. It don't mean don't just do the act. It means also in the spirit, don't even look at a woman to lust after her in your heart. You see, that goes back to what? Circumcision of the heart. You see, that goes back to what? Him what? Writing his laws in your heart. You see, we do this thing through the spirit. We keep the law through the spirit. And if you don't have the Ruach, which I'm referring to as the spirit, okay? The Ruach is the spirit. If you don't have the Ruach, then guess what? you will find it hard to walk this walk. You will find it hard to keep his laws and statutes. You will find it hard because you can't do, do it through your flesh. Okay? Now, I got another scripture for you, right? Let's go back to Romans again. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Okay. Romans chapter 6 says this. Okay, it says, now, I'm sorry, it's Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, I'm going to go to the end of the chapter here. Okay, now, he says, but I see, this is uh, verse 23, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me into the captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Then he says, I thank Elohim through Yahushua HaMashiach, our master. So then with the mind, I serve the law of Elohim. Do you hear what I'm saying? With the mind, I serve the law of Elohim. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Wow. There it is. It's through the Spirit. By walking in the Spirit, the Spirit gives you, let me tell you something. The Spirit is constantly giving us laws and commandments every day. Let me give you another one. It's not, this law and commandment is not in the Torah at all. But it's in Revelations. What did the Spirit say to His people in Revelations? It said, come out of her, my people. Talking about Babylon. That ye received not her plagues. That's another law. Now the laws of the spirit. What the spirit brings us. It can be a law just for you. It might not be for everyone. The spirit may come to you. And the spirit will tell you. Don't, don't go out the door. Right? If you go out that door. Then you disobeying the spirit. Right? Think about it. Think about what I'm trying to say here, right? Remember Ananias and Sapphira, right? When the apostles told everybody to go and sell everything they had and bring and lay it at their feet, right? This was something that was done by the Spirit. It was the Spirit put it on their hearts to tell the people to do this, right? So when everybody went and did this, right? Ananias and Sapphira didn't obey the Spirit. And what happened? They dropped dead, didn't they? See, that was a law to them. And judgment came on them because they broke that law. You understand? So the Most High has constantly given us laws and commandments. He's constantly speaking to us, right? 
It's not just the Torah. So, should we be circumcised? Well, this is what my point on it, okay? I would say, sure. Sure, you should be circumcised. But if you think that that circumcision is going to get you into his kingdom, then you're completely wrong. Because we don't seek to be justified by the law. We don't seek our justification through the law. You understand? Because just like Shaul said, it's not of works lest any man should boast. That way you'll be able to boast. But it's by grace. Because he has given us grace through his spirit that we can walk in his spirit and keep his laws and commandments, right? And keep his laws and commandments. And guess what? And if we, if we make mistakes, the most I said what? I'll forgive you. If you come to me and I'll forgive you. But all this stuff that the Christian church is doing, well, I make a mistake every day, the same mistake every day a hundred times, and he going to keep on forgiving me. So I'm going to just go and fornicate. I'm going to just go live in sin and do all of these things. And the most high is like saying, no, mm -mm. no, this isn't what I want you to do. The scripture says, shall, it, shall, shall, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yah forbid. The scriptures now think about that scripture. Shall we continue? What is sin? Transgressing the law. Shall we continue to transgress the law that sin may abound? Grace. That grace may abound. Yah forbid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that grace may abound. So basically, we got to keep that in mind here, okay? That we are not to um, blatantly not keep his commandments and his statutes, okay? We are to keep his commandments and statutes, okay? It's just, uh, it's just easier when you do it through the Spirit because the Spirit will give you strength and he will give you grace and he will give you power to do those things if you walk in the Spirit. Understand. Don't the Scripture say this here? That's right. Don't the Scripture say as this here? What does it say? Walk in the Spirit and you won't what? Fulfill the lust of the flesh. But when you look at the items of the lust of the flesh, what are they? commandments that are that people are breaking that's right it's sin okay so walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the sin against the law if we had just had a, a newborn child i would have them circumcised all of my boys are circumcised of course i would definitely get them circumcised okay now am i getting them circumcised because to be justified by keeping the law no i'm not doing it as justification i'm doing it because it's a law that tells me that i should do it it's no different than the law that tells me i should not steal right so if i'm going to keep the law that tells me i shouldn't steal then you mean tell me i can break the one that says um uh, that i'm supposed to have my my male circumcised you get what you get what i'm saying here so Basically, yeah, I say, yeah, you should. You should, okay? But don't misunderstand what the Scripture's talking about when you're getting circumcised or when you're circumcising a young child, okay? It's not for justification, but circumcision of the heart is more important. And that's how I raise my kids. They have all, my sons have all been circumcised, right? But they are understanding what it means to be circumcised of the heart. Okay, that means I had a flesh cut away from your spirit, man, so that you could walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. You understand? So I hope that explained everything. On that note, I'm going to say shalom.